thank you for joining us today online. We appreciate you uh, spending some time with us here at Bethel Worship Center. Uh, we hope that you and your family have had a wonderful Christmas holiday celebrating the birth of Jesus and the coming of our Savior uh, and remembering that time in your life uh, where He saved you and came into your life. So, uh, But we're glad that you're joining us today as we are now getting ready to transition into a new year, which is always a fun time of year because it's like opening a new book. It's like uh, turning the page on a new chapter. So it's always an exciting thing. And we just want to let you know real quick some things coming up here in the new year at Bethel Worship Center that we would love for you to be a part of. Um, uh, our Sunday weekend services, we are always excited about those. We love them. We love getting together as the body uh, on campus and online and we will be back on campus next week and a couple of things we want to let you know going into the new year series that we're going to be starting on the weekends here at Bethel. The first series in January we're going to be doing is one called In Jesus Name. It is a series about prayer. You know we understand, we talk, we ask people for prayer uh, oftentimes in our life. Will you pray for this? We spend some time trying to pray. We understand maybe the importance of prayer but do we understand the power of prayer? And so I want us to look over the over uh, several weeks about prayer, and uh, we're, maybe you're like the disciples, and you want to ask the question, Jesus, teach me to pray. And we're going to look at the scriptures and learn just that. And then right after that series, we're going to go into another series called First Comes Love. We're going to look at understanding maybe what the Bible says, what the Bible teaches us, how our faith impacts relationships in our life, whether we're single, the other relationships we have, our marriage and our family life. So we would love for you to be a part of that with us called First Comes Love. And we've got some exciting things planned in January and February as well that goes with those series. So make sure you check online to see what we have coming up. Um, I want to let you know and show you what you did this past month uh, for Turbeville Children's Home. Uh, I shared in our message last week, but I want to show you what goes on at Turbyville Children's Home? I want to let you hear from the director there. This will take just a couple of minutes. So check this out, what you did and what's going on at Turbyville Children's Home. Church family, I'm here with uh, Mr. Tim. He is the director of Turberville Children's Home and wanted to give you an opportunity just to hear from him what these guys do. What service, what ministry does Turberville Children's Home provide? Um, well, number one, thank you guys for everything you do for our ministry here. Uh, our job here is to take care of children who for usually no fault of their own can't live with mom or dad. Um, they need a place to stay. They're placed uh, here at Turbyville Children's Home um, for us to be able to take care of them on, their, on a daily basis. So our house parents serve as mom and dad, uh, mom or dad to uh, uh, the children that help them with their homework. Uh, they try to teach them life skills, uh, those kinds of things like a, a mom or dad would do in, in a normal home setting. Um, our children come from all over the state of South Carolina. Uh, they're placed here again by the Department of Social Services, uh, to, and we, we just provide a daily service to the kids. Uh, and you said they're all over the age of 12? All of them are over the age of 12 years old, uh, be it Department of Social Services regulations. Uh, we only have teenagers right now. Uh, the younger kids are placed in foster homes throughout the state. Yeah. And you guys, you, he showed us around a little while ago, you guys are in the process of remodeling a lot of your facilities. Yes, sure building has been here since 1949 yes, sir. and uh, and our denomination took it in 2015, 2015 correct? and correct. opened the doors February 2016. Yes, sir. Are most of the kids, are they foster or are they orphans? Uh, most of them are foster. There's not, there's not too many of them uh, that we have. We don't have any of them right now that are orphans. We okay. have uh, uh, foster kids who they have parents but their parent may be incarcerated or on drugs or um, deemed unsuitable by the Department of Social Services to take care of the kids right now. Gotcha. gotcha. And the house parents, you were telling us earlier, you've got 
capacity for six house parents, I think it, I think it was? Well, I've got six house parents right now. Right now, okay. And, and I need about six more. So, I got you, uh, I got you. If, you're, if anyone you know is interested in, in doing this kind of ministry, uh, we would love to talk with you. Give me a call. Tim Moore here at Turbyville Children's Home. Be more than happy to talk with you to, to make this ministry available to anybody who might be interested. That's great. Well, God bless you guys for what you're doing. We Thank appreciate it. So it's much. an honor for us to just be a small part of what you're doing. You guys have made a difference uh, for our kids in ways that you'll never, never really know. And thank you. Thank you, sir. So I hope that makes you excited about what you were able to do for Turboville Children's Home. And we hope you're excited to go into next year with us, that you will be inviting friends, inviting loved ones to come and take part of what's happening here at Bethel Worship Center. Now today, I want to talk to you briefly, just real quick, about an idea that I will hope take you into the new year with some inspiration, something to encourage you as you go into the new year. But before we do that, let's prepare our heart and let's prepare our mind to receive it by going into a time of worship with Frontline. All things have passed away Your love has stayed the same Your constant grace Remains the cornerstone Things that we thought were dead Are breathing in life again You cause your sun to shine on darkest nights For all that you've done we will pour out
So every time we enter the new year, we've always got these New Year's resolutions or our goals for the new year. Or what's trendy now is the your one word for the year. You know, your kind of your focus for the year. And those are all great and those are all really good. But it's hard for us sometimes to go through with our resolutions. You know, you've got this battle between the dream of what we want to see ourselves achieve versus the reality of life and what we are capable of achieving with our time and and how we use our time and the things that we're doing. Statistics tell us this. I found this very interesting that 67% because you know often our, our, our one big resolution of the year is to get fit, to get to get in shape, right? That's that's why I'm out here at Kendall Park at their walking trail. And this statistic is staggering to me. 67% of gym memberships go unused, which is fascinating. You know, this time of year when you go into January, you know, I've been a part of a, of a gym. I have a membership at Fitness Zone and, and to be honest with you, for the last several months, I've kind of fallen into that statistic because of reality and time. But in January, memberships skyrocket because that's when everybody's setting their New Year's resolutions or New Year's goals. I'm going to get in shape and I'm going to do this this year. So they get, I pay for the membership. If I pay for the membership, I'm going to go and I'm going to be there. 67% go unused. Finder.com tells us that 6.1 million Americans have 397 million dollars of unused gym memberships say what now I don't know about you but that is staggering to me of a lot of money that is just poured out towards nothing right now that's what gyms build their business plan on they kind of bank on the fact that you're gonna pay whether you come or not so they're making money so that's a good business model for them but it's a poor choice for us if we're not gonna use it because we're just kinda of throwing that money out of the wind so the thing that we have to do is we have to learn to balance the dream we want to achieve and the reality that we have in life and when we learn to balance the two then we begin to see the possibilities that can take place in our life. Now I want to tell you about a couple of guys that did just that, that impacted our world in kind of a big way. So let's go somewhere else so I can tell you about these guys. So I'm out here in nature because I wanted to tell you about these couple of guys who uh, when they had the thought of possibility that came into their mind and the potential that came into their mind, uh, they might would have been in a place like this because these two guys, they were bird watchers. Um, and uh, they not only liked to watch birds, but they would, they, were, they would draw the birds that they would see. So, you know, one day while they were, it's, it's stated that while they were bird watching and they were drawing these birds, one of the guys got this idea and they thought to themselves, what if, what if we could harness the potential of a bird, the same potential a bird has, apply that for us and fly? You probably know who I'm talking about now. It's the Wright brothers. You know, the Wright brothers had, they had no education that led them towards learning how to fly. They had, they had nothing in them that, that, that led them in this direction from their background. They, in fact, they were bike riders, uh, bike shop owners. They, you know, they dealt with two wheels, not two wings, okay? So, so I mean, these guys didn't have it in them to, you would think, to figure out how to fly. In fact, uh, the government had been paying a gentleman $70,000 to figure out the whole concept of flying and how to create this aspect for man to be able to fly. But these two guys figured it out. In fact, an author, and I've got the quote here, the author's name is David McCullough, and the book's appropriately titled The Wright Brothers. He wrote this about the Wright Brothers. He said, the fact that these guys had no business figuring this out, in no way did any of this discourage or deter Wilbur and Orville Wright any more than the fact that they had no college education, no formal technical training, no experience working with anyone other than themselves, no, uh, no friends in high places, no financial backers, 
no government subsidies, and little money of their own, he says. Or, or this entirely real possibility that at some point they could be killed. <laughs> right? So where you've got this guy Samuel Langley getting paid $70,000 to try to figure out flying, the Wright brothers figured, out, figured it out, they say, by as little as $1,000. Unbelievable. But what led them to this? Well, they took the dream that they had, that they came up with by watching birds one day, combined it with the reality of what they had in front of them to be able to figure it out, and then they were powered by the potential that was there. And all of that created possibility for them. So here's what, here's what I want to encourage us today and as we go into this new year. What is, what is the potential that you see? If you combine your dream and reality and you combine the potential that's there, how could that fuel possibility in your life? Let's just ask it this way very simply. What is possible for you in this coming year? And even more than you just asking yourself what is possible for you, I want us to ask, uh, ask ourselves the question, what does God believe is possible for us? So what does God believe is possible for you? I want to take just a moment and share with you some things that Scripture, I believe, tells you that God believes is possible for you. So in Matthew chapter 19, Jesus had been explaining how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of heaven and for someone to be saved. And he gets this question back and they say, well, how in the world can anyone be saved? And Jesus responds to them and he says that with man, this is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. All things are possible. Because see, God is full of possibilities. And God wants to transform our life. And it's only through Jesus Christ that we can experience true transformation. And so I believe that there's some aspects of our life, some character aspects and things that Jesus, through His Holy Spirit, through what He has done for us, can make possible in our life. So let's, let me give you just a few. And I want you to think about these uh, today and going into the new year. Here's one. Love. Love is a possibility for you. God can teach you how to love. God can teach you how to uh, embrace love, how to allow yourself to be loved, how to love others. Jesus Christ, God can, through His Holy Spirit, that is a possibility for you today. You can learn love. How about this one? Joy. You may be saying, I don't know what joy is. I've never really experienced true joy. Through His Holy Spirit, joy is a possibility for your life. Here's another one. Peace. Peace is a possibility for you today. You know, you may be struggling with just chaos all around you, but peace is a possibility for you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's one. This is a fun one. Patience. Patience is a possibility. Now, my wife would probably tell you, I don't know, Javen, if patience is a possibility for you. But God's Word tells me, through the power of the Holy Spirit, patience is a possibility for me. Maybe that's a possibility from God for you this year that you need to focus on. How about this one? We'll put these two together. Kindness. Goodness. Kindness. Goodness. That's a possibility for you through God, through the power of His Holy Spirit this year. We can begin to walk in a spirit of kindness and goodness towards others. Maybe you want God to help you grow in that area. How about this one? Faithfulness. God can create in you a greater ability to be faithful. God can create in you a person who is full of faith. You can be a person full of faith. You can be a faithful person. That is a possibility for you today. Gentleness. Gentleness is a possibility for us. And here's a good one. Self-control. Now, 
you're probably looking at this list and you're saying, Javen, that list is very familiar to me. That's right, because this is from Paul's letter to the church of Galatia. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, we see him tell us that the fruit of the Spirit is these things. All of these things, this is a possibility for our life. You may thought that you, you may have thought before, I can never have any of this. I can never be this type of person. But through God, we can. And God can grow us to become even better. I want to add just a couple of more uh, ideas to this that, that we see in Scripture that can be possibilities for you this year. Hope. Hope is a possibility for you. Pardon my handwriting. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is a possibility. You may be struggling to forgive someone. Through God, it is possible for you to be able to do that. You may be, you may be struggling to embrace forgiveness from someone. God can help you to embrace that. Forgiveness is a possibility for you. Belonging. That's a possibility. You can have that today. Growth. You can grow. You can mature in Christ and know Him more. Freedom. Scripture is full of possibilities. It is full of possibilities for your life. And with God, everything is possible. But we know that if we try to focus on everything, then oftentimes we don't accomplish anything. So here's what I want to encourage you going into this year. As you look at Scripture, maybe there's something in Scripture that you pull out for yourself outside of these that you need. It's a possibility from God. But maybe there's something in this list. There's one thing that is possible that you want God to show you is possible this year. God, teach me to love. I want that to be my possibility this year. God, I need more self-control. There's areas that I'm struggling in, that I'm struggling to, to, to have control. I feel like I'm out of control in these areas. But Father, you said that through your Holy Spirit, self-control is a possibility for me. Help me to obtain that. So here's my challenge to you going into this year. If it's just this list, look at this list and say, which one of these is a possibility for me through the power of God and His Holy Spirit? Because with Him, if I try to obtain these things on my own, I'm incapable. But if I put myself in His hands and I allow Him to transform me, then that's possible. So I want to encourage you, which one of these is your possibility this year? I would love for you to go online to our website. Go to bwccamden.com forward slash possible. And we have some things on there for you on that page that can help you get started for these. If you're saying that love is my, we have some devotion just to get you started towards seeing how that is possible for you from God. And we also want you to share with us what is the one thing that you want God to make possible in your life this year? Which one of these? What's something else? The one thing you want God to make possible for you. And I can tell you this, with Him, it will be possible. So as we close today, here's what I want to invite you to do. As Frontline closes us out with a moment of worship, I want you to, some, to spend some time reflecting, focusing on God, and asking Him that question, God, what do I need to seek You in my life to be possible this year? Which one of these qualities, which one of these characteristics do I need to let You make possible in my life?
Thank you.